We are back with a brand new video. In today's video, we're going to be recapping the game one between Miami Heat and uh, the Philadelphia 76ers in the 2022 NBA Eastern Conference semifinals. Um, it was a great game, especially in the first half. In the second half, uh, kind of became a little bit more lopsided, but we're going to be talking about it, uh, talking about the adjustments for the Heat moving, moving forward. Uh, some stuff about the Sixers um, and yeah, so on and so forth. So if you guys are new to the channel, make sure you guys subscribe. Uh, we are trying to hit 2000 subscribers as soon as possible. So if you guys have not already subscribed, go down and hit that subscribe button, man. It takes like two seconds. It really helps out the channel. Leave a like on the video. As always, comment down below your opinions about the game. I, I saw a lot of comments last video. I, I, I love that because I really want to build this community. Um, and lastly, lastly, but not least, um, please, please, please go out, go out and check out my second channel because uh, uh, we we drop some bangers on there um almost weekly uh pretty much weekly sometimes even twice a week so check out my second channel if you've not already um because it's just nba content outside of the heat so let's get right into it man um this was a game that was one it was it was one in the mud it was one in the trenches um it, it was one on the glass uh the heat really really demolished the sixers on the on, on the offensive glass and on the total uh, rebounds as well, I out rebounded them, and that's where this game was won, in my opinion. In the first quarter, the Heat came out aggressive and uh, punched the Sixers early on an 18 to six run. Um, the Sixers responded though. Um, Doc Rivers went to a zone, and it really, really caused the Heat some struggles. Um, and in the second quarter, the Heat were not really able to figure out their offense, and the Sixers were able to take a one point lead going into halftime. Um, in the third and the fourth quarters, however, the Heat really were able to figure out how to break the zone um, and also were able to, you know, give the ball more to their uh, scoring threats like Tali Hero and uh, Bam Adebayo. And with those two being on the floor, they were able to do some really, really good things uh, being the leading uh, scorers for this team in this game. It was very interesting early on, you know, in the preview, I really pred I predicted uh, that without Joel Embiid, Doc Rivers probably would go with Paul Reed to start the game. He didn't. He went with DeAndre Jordan. I thought that really, really benefited the Heat. You know, I'm, I'm not a Sixers fan, but if you're a Sixers fan, you'll probably agree with me too. Like, uh, putting De DeAndre Jordan in the game really, really helped the Heat because he didn't score. He only had two rebounds. His defense was atrocious. Uh, he was like a minus 22 in his 17 minutes on the court. Um, and, and when he was on the court, the Heat was a were were uh, were a plus 19 uh, with him on the court. So. Um, yeah, DeAndre Jordan did not have a good game, and it looks like he's going to be starting game two as well because Doc Rivers said he's our guy. He literally said, quote unquote, we love DJ and we're going to keep starting him regardless of whatever people, whether people like it or not. So it looks like he's going to get the starting uh, uh, nod in game two and uh, so on and so forth until Embiid is back which is a really big positive for the Heat because, you know, as long as he's in the game, it's kind of barbecue chicken because he's kind of past it. Bam is going to have his way with him on the on the glass and, you know, in the scoring department. Um, and Bam had his best game of the playoffs so far, 24 uh, and 12, four assists. Uh, defensively, he was elite. And um, he really, really did a good job. And uh, shout out to Bam, you know, e even when Paul Reed got in the game, Paul Reed was in foul trouble. Um, throughout the whole game he picked up two quick fouls in the first quarter when he checked in and since then you know he was he had kept you know picking up fouls and he ended up picking like picking up five fouls which led uh doc rivers to put deandre jordan back in the game in the fourth quarter and that's when the heat ultimately made their big run in the third um and in the early part of the fourth quarter so um that kind of just you know you know i know it was only a 14 point game but the heat essentially won this game by 20 uh because you know the, the garbage time minutes uh, allowed for Con Korkmaz to score score a little bit, um, Charles Bassey to get an and one and stuff like that. But um, yeah, I really thought that the Heat did a really really good job uh, tonight. You know, uh, being resilient. Uh, you know that, that that second quarter was not pretty. The offense was very stagnant. Um, it looked like the lineup with Butler, Oladipo, and Hero didn't have much ball movement, uh, but they were able to figure it out. I don't even, I don't think Jimmy played. The fourth quarter i mean he might he might have played a little bit but if it was it was a very little bit of a uh, little amount of minutes that he played in the fourth quarter it was uh he, he basically sat the entire fourth and um we were able to win that game he jimmy didn't have a great game tonight uh he started off pretty good in the first in the first quarter but after that he was you know kind of he, he he didn't provide his usual scoring output only 15 points um I thought PJ Tucker was huge 
you know, on the on the glass. He had a couple of big offensive rebounds defensively. He was amazing on James Harden. James Harden had a low scoring game with 16 points. I thought Tobias Harris was their best player. Obviously, he was huge for them, 27. He was hitting a lot of tough shots. And when he's hitting those shots, he can't really do anything but just try to, you know, slow him down. Uh, but he was he really had it going i don't know if tobias harris is going to match that for the rest of the series but um in game one he was cooking he was cooking for sure um i thought gabe you know really settled in in the third quarter hit a, hit a, hit some big threes got a big end one hit it hit it hit some nice mid-range shots but i thought the stars of the show were tyler and bam you know both of them i talked about bam but hero man he's just so ignitable um his best game of the playoffs for sure 20 25 and seven assists uh he really did everything that he could you know i thought he did a great job trying to bust the zone by getting the ball into the middle and forcing you know dribble, dribble penetration kicking it out to an open shooter reloading getting the ball back off of offensive rebounds he he had a masterful game you know he was really really good um some observations through this game um it already is apparent that Dwayne Dedman will probably not have much use in the series as long as as the Sixers can uh, try to go small off the bench um you know he's a foul machine uh Dedman is and um when he was on the court the Sixers kept making a run so I don't think he's going to be used much or I don't think he should be used much in the series because I don't really think the series suits him um I would much you know rather prefer a guy like Duncan Robinson out there getting some of those minutes uh because at least he provides spacing which can be really really beneficial against the zone so um you know early observations i know it's still game one but it doesn't look like Dwayne Dedman's going to be very serviceable this series on the sixers side though this is really what i was talking about um in one of my videos i made a video about the sixers on this channel a while ago and i and i also talked about it on the, on the preview but you know for the sixers who really is going to beat is going to beat us in a game especially from the perimeter you know they don't really have known shooting you know um in their team they don't really have snipers guys that you know on the scouting report are guys that you know um i know they have guys like who shoot 40 percent like george niang but that's a fake 40 percent. that's not a guy that you know is a is a certified he's going to run off screens and make your defense work and be a target for dribble handoffs he's not that type of player you know, he's not a Max Struess. He's not a Duncan Robinson. He's not a Seth Curry who they had on their team and traded him. Um, they don't really have known shooting perimeter threats. And that's where the Heat are going to win the series because Matisse Thibault, whenever he was on the floor, the Heat were playing off of him. As I predicted in the preview, you know, he only had two points and that was on a fast break layup. Uh, but whenever he was on the floor, you know, uh, defensively, he's going to be active. Hero still had 25. Um but offensively he just he's just gonna get played off of the court man uh niang had a big fat zero uh was not hitting his threes and i told you niang is a 40 he's a, he's a 40 percent shooter but that's not a that's not a real 40 percent if you know what i mean that's not like a 40 percent where oh my god that, that's a sniper that's a buddy heel type player that's a joe harris seth curry duncan robinson he's not that type of guy in my opinion you know hopefully for sixers fans sake he proves me wrong or whatnot but i hope he doesn't um for for my sake because uh i would much rather the heat win the series a lot easier um but like i said man they don't really have known shooting threats james harden is has definitely lost a step you can see it um he got past gabe vincent once but that that was about it man you saw some flashes here and there but he didn't really have that great of a game turned the ball over um, and speaking of turnovers, the Heat really did a good job in the second half, limiting some of those turnovers that they uh, were committing in the first half. It was in the in the second quarter they were committing a lot of turnovers. In the second half, we did a really good job taking care of the ball. Um, but I think the Philadelphia 76ers are going to come out next game desperate. They know they have to win Game Two because if they go down 2-0, um, it's going to be very hard for them to come back. Because then you got to win four games. Um, then you got to win four games out of five, basically, if you want to have a chance to win the series for, for the Sixers. And, and Bede is definitely out for game two. We'll see if Lowry is back for game two. That could be a uh, big X factor because I'm pretty sure it was Chris Haynes who said there is a chance he might be back for game two. Um, I wouldn't rush anything. Uh, you know, I think we're, you know, Lowry's obviously a really good player, but I think we've been playing fine without him. So just let him get to 100%. You don't want to re-aggravate anything on that hamstring. But yeah. Uh, that's basically the recap of this uh, game, man. Let me know if you guys have any thoughts in the comment section below. Leave a like, subscribe, and check out my second channel. I'll see you later as always, man.
peace.